We decided to do a prefab building so that we could move directly from the apartment building we were renting to the lot. It would take four to six months, bada bing bada boom, we would be in a prefab building. So three and a half years later, the building arrived down Arcola. We called people out to the streets to watch the buildings arrive and they came and they're out on the street and the first building is coming down Arcola Avenue and they're about to turn off of Arcola into the lot and through the playground and the first one turns and hops the curb and as it comes up on the curb, boom. building was sitting smack in the middle of the road, traffic blocked in both directions, I think for several hours. The police are there, the buses have to be diverted, kids can't get home from school, and we're on the news that there's been a crash of a modular building in the middle of a, of a major county thoroughfare. And that's how this building began. Our Torah is, in many ways, the fruits of our labor. Because the area is literally exploding, they needed to form another community, and they formed a community built on the ideals they absorbed in the yeshiva. We wanted to be part of a yeshiva type minion, but we also wanted a, a shul that we could call our own and, and, and have our families come to and have it be a family-oriented shul as well. There was nothing like that here in Silver Spring. There was a yeshiva, there were family-centric shuls, but there wasn't really a fusion of the two ideas together. We started inviting people together and really came from Rabbi Lopiansky's idea that I told him we want to start something, and he said, you really can't just start something and pop it up as a minion. He said, you have to start a community first. And the way we started a community was by making a couple of kiddishes. And then it became apparent, you know, we wanted to do learning together, and we created learning groups, and that's how we got this name, the Chabura. After that, it became apparent, okay, this is a group that could daven together. Like if you could already, if you could eat together and you could learn together a little bit, so then you could daven together. And then after we started that, then Shabbos day, we started renting the basement in the University Towers. So the first location for our tour actually was my 1996 Oldsmobile Silhouette van, which stored the, ch the chumashim, the sedorim, the mechitzas, the chalun pots, everything you can need for a shul in a van. And every Friday, I would drive it from my parking spot in the apartment building that I lived in to the apartment building that we were renting the bingo room in just for Shabbos, and we would unload it into that apartment building. By the time I came here, they already had a space, a rental space on the bottom of the University Towers here, where they were having a regular Shabbos minion. And that's the point when I joined the shul. We literally were renting the room for hours at a time, and we literally had to leave the stuff in the corner of a room, clean up and, and pack it all up. And then when we left the towers, we went to this other place in CVS. You know, we were able to have space and we had our own entrance, but we learned that, you know, the neighbors are a big part of that. And so we needed to do what seemed impossible, which was to find an empty piece of land and be able to build on it. This was basically the last plot of undeveloped land was the playground at the Silver Spring Jewish Center. So we eyed that as really the only last hope for to build a, pro a proper building. And uh, so we were able to identify that as the natural last place for another shul in the community. It was a real struggle for uh, what we were, a small group of people at the time, you know, about 50 families to try to build a, a real building and to purchase a piece of land and build a proper, a proper place for us to be able to dive in and learn. So um, it was looking difficult. And then luckily, uh, Yudi swept in and was really able to, to make this project a reality without him. Uh, it would definitely have not been possible, and it, we definitely wouldn't be here today. Yodi just stepped up to the plate quickly, willingly, happily. He really came through at a time where we had nowhere else to turn that we knew of, um, and just completely supported us to get us to get us on the ground, literally. The reason that I was so passionate about helping this community is because I saw how devoted they were towards living a Torah lifestyle. It is therefore so befitting that we're dedicating it in honor of my parents. I'm humbled by the fact that our family name is being used in the synagogue and that it's part of the name of the synagogue. What makes Or Hatoa unique is that it isn't just one individual or one family that has made the uh, experience of Or Hatoa successful or that the building and the development of the synagogue successful. It has been a collective effort of a lot of people. And it, it's obvious from 
the very many people who've already contributed to the synagogue and who will contribute in the future, that this is a, a kahila that is um, many people, of many people, not just uh, a few. It's not just a shul, it's not that you just come to shul and then you're here and then that's it. It's a type of feeling that I I bring it home with me. I love talking about it. I love telling my family about how amazing the Rev and the Rebbitson are. It's really a large part of our lives. It's amazing when you look at the past five years and how much has been accomplished. You think about the next five years and what's going to be. It's really a community and, and as a bigger sense, it's become like a family. And so it's inspiring to welcome people into our family and to grow together and to see all of our families do the best we can to serve Hashem and to, and to grow uh, all of our families together.